Day 22 of the Chad Daybell trial. Seven witnesses called, six of them pretty worthless. Fuel me once here, driving instructor of the world. None of the seven witnesses called today were worth anything to the prosecution's case. It was all stuff we already knew, we've already heard before, except for the very passionate texts between Chad and Lori. And I'm going to read you those. But first, I want to focus on the victims, JJ and Tylee. We'll also be focusing on Tammy Daybell um, for the videos that I put out for most of the rest of the trial, just to remind us why we're really here. Okay, stay tuned for those very salacious texts. I mean, they're pretty drippy, you know, for an average writer. The second witness called today is Dr. Angie Christensen, a forensic anthropologist who analyzes the bones and basically says, hey, these bones have been burned and they were pretty much uh, fresh or almost fresh uh, when they were burned. Long testimony just to say that. Then they call up Tylee's best friend. She's only up there for like five minutes. And all she testifies is that Tylee is very maternal towards JJ. She's a big support system. This is a point that Pryor, Chad's lawyer, has been trying to make over and over again on cross-examination and the state has objected to. It's ridiculous. By the way, hey, Lori, when you wanted to be alone with Chad, did you ever think, hey, I know, JJ's grandparents wanted him. I'll just let them have him. Oh, and Alex offered a place to Tylee. She's 16. Let's let her live there. That would be easy. Nope. Instead, she thinks... People might think she's a bad mom if she doesn't have her kids. Oh, I'll just unalive them instead. Next, they call David Sincerbo. He's a retired police arson specialist. He's trying to test whether any gas was involved with Tylee's remains. And guess what? There's some gas. The problem is, he says, I can't determine whether the gas came from the debris and dirt in the soil or from her remains. That's it. They recalled Detective Chuck Consitis of the Rexburg PD on social media one day. He happened to see a satellite photo of Chad's backyard and he thought, hey, I'm going to do some satellite mapping. So he calls Apollo Mapping. They're the ones that have that image. And then he says, let me look up the satellite images. Oh, guess what? There's a discolorated piece of soil on the days that Tylee and JJ were buried. Wow. Thank you. Then they call Doug Halapaska. He's an FBI forensic examiner of firearms and tool marks. The marks that tools make. So they contact him. He's basically the FBI version of Tim the Tool Man. He's all over the place. He's talking about photos not on the screen yet. The jury can't see them. He's jumping ahead. And then he gives a detailed description of all the ways that he investigates tools and the process he uses to determine which tools make which marks on bones. In this case, Tylee's bones. Oh, can you tell us which tools made these marks? Um, no. But I do know there were some stabby stabby and choppy choppy marks on Tylee's bones. So they were made with stabby stabby tools and choppy choppy tools. That's his whole testimony in a nutshell. FBI specialist Nick Balance, the Lord of Cell Data. Now, he gives a whole bunch of of information about the time and dates of texts going back and forth on October 9th and October 18th, the day that Tammy was attacked with the paintball gun, but nothing happened, and of course, the day she was unalived. 
or she unalived. We don't know if anyone did it to her. Uh, basically, what we know is Alex was near the home both days around the time of the incidents. About an hour for all of that. The jury has to walk away confused because he's just rattling off dates, times. The text goes from here to there and from this person to that person. Oh, can you tell us what any of the texts say? No. Did you look at the frequency of texts any other days? No. Thank you very little. Pryor doesn't even cross-examine the guy. It's a bold move. It's supposed to signal to the jury that there's nothing here that connects Chad to anything. Attack on Tammy or the kids. You know, I'm wondering if Chad will take the stand. He may just be arrogant enough to think, hey, maybe I'll persuade these people of the jury too. It's going to be very interesting. By the way, uh, because of Chad, I did look into my own past lives, and it turns out that every time I was a cleaner of horse stables. Every time. Now, the first witness of the day is continuing Nicole Heidemann, the FBI tactical specialist. She looks at texts. August 9th, Chad texts to Lori. He kissed her deeply and twined their bodies together for another round of pleasurable bonding. This is B prose. This is, you know, anyway, Lori writes back to Chad. The fire's definitely burning. I miss you way too much. You need to stop or I might explode. Lori then also writes back, the intensity of each encounter. Oh boy. Chad to Lori. We were definitely in new territory in your bedroom. The next day he writes, Elena, he's continuing the James and Elena story. I'm going to do a whole post on just that. Elena's magic hand has gripped the storm. They stare into each other's eyes and they are barely able to breathe as intense waves wash over them. Then she's asked, um, what is the storm name? Oh, that's for Chad's, um, part. You know, this thing. Elena's magic hand has gripped the storm. I wonder if he ever says, Hold on, Elena, brace yourself. The storm is coming. No, she, Lori just writes back, Yes, she did. Then Chad's like, I love you, Elena. What a wonderful chemistry we share. Lori, Chad, I love you more. That's so hot. I just need you more than ever. Like a Harlequin novel. Chad to Lori, you are amazing. Please save that last segment. I want to read it with you naked, then relive it all. Okay, now, <laughs> the reason why those texts are kind of important is they start to go to motive. The prosecution's trying to show that he had a vanilla life with Tammy. His brother-in-law even said that once he described their life together, not their intimacy, but their life together as kind of vanilla. Chad has this intense romantic situation with Lori and he wants her forever. So supposedly, according to the prosecution, they're both willing to do anything just to be with each other because, oh, it's so hot. Listen, on the road of life, please drive kind and keep a storm in your pants. Thank you.